My favorite kind of obscure Pokemon trivia is when the developers hide a mechanic in the game that is taking place but just never outright told to the player. Like how in black and white, the drums that play in the music will only play when you're walking around. If you're standing still, they'll just stop. Or how in Ruby and Sapphire, when they added an island in the game that has a 1 out of 65,000 chance to spawn. But you probably knew those. What I find interesting is that the vast majority of seasoned Pokemon fans have only scratched the surface of the hidden mechanics that are tucked away in every single addition to the Pokemon series. If you enjoyed this video, this is actually episode 12 in my obscure Pokemon fact series. And these videos do take me a while, so if you want to be notified when a new one is out, you can hit the bell down below. And now it's time to dive in. Welcome to the secret world of hidden mechanics. So one of the most mysterious characters in Pokemon lore is N. He's found his way into tons of theories, partly because he's just a genuinely interesting, well-developed character, but N is also portrayed this way by Game Freak, using multiple very well-hidden mechanics to convey that feeling. The first is one you may have noticed during a casual playthrough. Any time you talk with N in the story of Pokemon Black and White, his text is automatically set at the fastest level possible. Even if your text speed is set to low, his text will always be as fast as it can go, which conveys a feeling that he knows exactly what he wants to say and means it with every word. And you may not notice it at first, but it really does affect the way you think about this character. Not only this, but throughout the first Generation 5 games, there are points where you can receive some of N's Pokemon, such as his Zoroa or his Darmanitan. And if you decide to actually use these Pokemon on your team, when you encounter N throughout the story, he will have lines of dialogue that only happen if those specific Pokemon are in your party. The amount of detail they put into these games and N as a character is actually unreal and I doubt we have even found everything there is to uncover. I think most people are aware that certain abilities have other effects that aren't explicitly mentioned anywhere in the game. Magnet Pull boosts the spawn rate of steel types in the grass. Swarm boosts the sound of Pokemon cries that play in the overworld of Pokemon Emerald. Well, there's a lot of these that you're probably aware of. But in Generation 8, they discreetly added an effect to an entire type that I bet at least a decent amount of people never knew about. Ever since Sword and Shield, Ghost-type Pokemon gained the ability to always escape from battle. No matter what the speed of your Pokemon, or whether you're fighting an Arena Trap Diglett, you'll always be able to escape if you're using a Ghost-type. And I would love to see Pokemon add more exclusive effects to different types. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas of some. This next fact entailed me having to learn how to make Charizard class level curry in Pokemon Sword, but after many attempts, I just couldn't do it. So I threw down my apron and signed up for the sponsor of this video, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a service that delivers fresh meal kits to make delicious gourmet meals straight to your door. It's okay if you're not the best cook. Everything's already pre-portioned with step-by-step -step instructions to ensure that each meal takes 30 minutes or less to make. If a 10-year-old kid can catch monsters, I know you can make some mean, sweet, and spicy apricot chicken. Contrary to popular belief, good food does not have to cost $1 million. HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than eating out and grocery shopping. Spice up your week with some cheese stuffed burgers with pesto aioli, or an Old Bay shrimp and sausage boil, or eat the whole box on the first night because you have no self-control. Use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGFINSEPT16 for 16 free meals across 7 boxes, plus 3 surprise gifts. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. 
It supports the channel and, I mean, it's food. You know the deal. Food's good. A special thank you to anyone who decides to sign up with my link and thank you to HelloFresh for supporting the channel. And now back to the video. The Johto Safari Zone is extremely unique in many ways. Not only have we never seen any kind of wild encounters nearly as complicated or as stupid, but we've also never seen any of these kind of safari mechanics since. But there's something going on behind the scenes inside of the code of the game that I doubt you've ever heard before. If you're watching my channel, you probably know what IVs are, basically hidden values that boost certain stats of each Pokemon. Well, usually wild encounters in tall grass have completely random IVs between their six stats, but this is actually not true for any Pokemon caught inside of the Safari Zone. For some reason, the Pokemon that are caught inside of the Safari Zone have an increased chance of having at least one stat being a perfect 31 IV. This mechanic is incredibly well hidden. There isn't any single NPC that tells you this or even any hints toward it that I'm aware of, entirely hidden in the background. And I'm only aware of this mechanic because I was told this by I'm a Blissey, a YouTuber who does some amazing content on RNG abuse. And you guys should definitely check him out. Pokemon Yellow has a pretty unique twist on the formula because you don't have any options when it comes to starter Pokemon. You're forced to take Pikachu as your partner while your rival is always given an Eevee. And well, with a Pokemon like Eevee being a starter, the question naturally arises of which evolution it will evolve into. And interestingly enough, it's decided in a pretty unique way. If after receiving Pikachu, you beat Blue at Professor Oak's lab, and then again at Route 22, his Eevee will evolve into a Jolteon. But if you lose the fight at Oak's lab and at Route 22, it will be a Vaporeon. And lastly, if you win just the first battle, he will have a Flareon. Sometimes hidden mechanics are hidden so well from the player that it makes it entirely impossible to even find them at all. In Pokemon Red and Blue, when interacting with the side of the TV on the ground floor of your house, it's greeted with the message, oops, wrong side. But in the remakes, Fire Red and Leaf Green, the TV is placed a little bit closer to the wall, making it impossible to interact with it from the side in those games. But if you're using a cheating device to access the side of the TV, unbelievably, it would still read the message of oops, wrong side, even though this TV was never intended to be encountered in this way. It's become a tradition to have a fact about Diglett in every single episode of this series. And I love how Game Freak has had to change certain things just to accommodate for this strange little mysterious mole. But I bet you'd be intrigued to know that Game Freak has been building even more strange lore mechanics about Diglett since Generation 2. And this next fact I'm going to tell you is without a doubt my all-time favorite. Pokedex entries go very overlooked, but an entry from Pokemon Crystal gives us an insight about an extremely well-hidden mechanic entirely exclusive to Generation 2. Diglett's Pokedex entry goes as such. Its skin is very thin. If it is exposed to light, its blood heats up, causing it to grow weak. Obviously, Diglett's main hideout is Diglett Cave in the Kanto region being the only place to catch Diglett in gold, silver, and crystal. And according to the Pokedex entries from this era, Diglett much prefers the nighttime and colder weather. So to show this through the games, during the nighttime inside of Diglett Cave, they secretly boosted the spawn rate of Diglett and Dugtrio. How can you boost the spawn rate of a Pokemon if the cave only spawns 100% Diglets? Well, instead, they boosted the 100% Diglett spawn all the way to 400%, meaning it will take you four times less steps to get a Diglett encounter inside this cave at night, making it a task to walk through without a rappel when the sun goes down. 
They also added a 200% boost to the morning time as well. And that's not even all. As days turn into nights in Diglett Cave, the levels of the Diglett that spawn will boost to almost double the levels that spawn during the day. The levels swing all the way down to level 2 in the daytime and all the way up to level 34 at night. This is without a doubt one of the best hidden mechanics in the series, and I wish they still cared about adding these type of things that make the world feel really different in each location. Pokemon Black and White are the only Pokemon games where you are forced to catch the legendary box art Pokemon. And when you arrive at the end of the story where you catch Zekrom or Reshiram, catching the legendary is a mandatory story beat. Even if you faint them or run away, they will just be standing there once you exit the battle. But there is actually one way to bypass this, and the only way to progress without catching them is to go beforehand and catch 720 Pokemon and fill all your boxes and your party, to where you have absolutely no space to carry the Pokemon at all. Then and only then will they be waiting in their alternate location for you to catch them at Dragon Spiral Tower after beating the game and facing a very hard disadvantaged fight. I just think it's interesting how Zekrom and Reshiram were never really supposed to be able to spawn in this location, and it was nothing more than a failsafe. But yet, the Pokemon in question is the one on the front of the box, an entire alternate ending for the legendary, hidden behind an incredible challenge. And a Reshiram or Zekrom with a met location of Dragon Spiral Tower has got to be one of the rarer legendaries that could exist. Generation 2 introduced some of the most loved mechanics in the Pokemon series to this day, with shiny Pokemon being one of the most important ideas to ever be put in a Pokemon game. Which, if you want to know why I say that, I made literally an entire video about it. It's up there. But, there's an extremely weird mechanic with one thing that is slightly rarer than a shiny Pokemon. Pokerus. Pokerus, which I'm sure you're all aware of, will double your EV gain when your Pokemon have it. You see, to get Pokerus, all you have to do is run around in the grass over and over and over again. With a rate of 1 in 21,000 or something, it will take you quite a while. But, in Gold, Silver, and Crystal, for a completely unknown reason, you cannot get Pokerus until you reach Goldenrod City. No matter how many battles you do, or Pokemon you encounter, it will never activate the coding script to allow your Pokemon to get Pokerus until you arrive in Goldenrod City and this could infer that this city is the origin of Pokerus. But that's just a theory. In Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal, there's an interesting mechanic that only pertains to Shuckle. If a Shuckle you have in your party is holding a berry, every time you battle with it, as soon as the battle finishes, there will be a 1 out of 16 chance for the berry that Shuckle was holding to be turned into a berry juice afterwards. This is really strange because abilities didn't exist until Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, yet Shuckle never gained an ability that allows it to do this, so it's just a strange one-off mechanic that has been completely forgotten about for the last 20 years. In Generation 2, Pokemon Crystal, there's a mechanic tied to friendship that I have almost never seen talked about before. Pokemon Crystal first introduced the idea of saving a Pokemon's met location, and to bring attention to the new feature, they snuck in a pretty well hidden mechanic. It's called the Met Location Friendship Boost. When you catch a Pokemon in this game, it will earn double the friendship if you train it on the exact same route that you caught it. The Met Location Friendship Boost does exist in games past Pokemon Crystal, but it was changed from a boost of times 2 all the way down to just one extra friendship point when you're training on that route. I think initially they thought that the met location of a Pokemon was something trainers might care about a little bit more, and when it kind of fell by the wayside, so did the mechanic. 
In December of 2006, Pokemon Battle Revolution released. This game was the last installment of the Pokemon Battle simulation style games that started with Pokemon Stadium. As per usual for a Pokemon game, it came with a strategy guide. These guides usually go pretty overlooked, but this one was a little bit different. Inside of the guide lied something rather strange. Everyone knows about shiny Pokemon, shiny legendaries, shiny mythicals, but what about a shiny trainer? According to the Battle Revolution guide, after beating the game and defeating certain coliseums, it was possible to obtain six different Pokemon-themed costumes. A Groudon, a Kyogre, an Electivire, a Rose Raid, a Pachirisu, and a Lucario. After beating all the trainers and the Colosseum leader who was wearing the costume, they would then give it to you to wear whenever you want. But what was really interesting was a picture that was attached to the bottom of the guide, hinting towards the possibility that these costumes could be shiny. Although no one had ever seen one in game before, occasionally people would post on forums asking how to obtain them. But because of this game's small audience, they didn't gain enough traction in order for a casual player to fully understand how it was possible to even find these. The only hint was to keep battling them. And so for 13 years, these shinies lay dormant, undiscovered, lost to time and obscurity. That was until November 4th, 2019, when a shiny costume was found for the first time in recorded Pokemon history. The description read, Here is the long-awaited proof the internet has been lacking for years and to this day, in regards to the existence of the alternately colored versions for the Colosseum leader's outfits slash costumes in Pokemon Battle Revolution. A shiny hunter known as Shiny Falco left a detailed message about his journey and his discovery searching for the shiny costume, but also presented was a devastating problem with his own find. The French Guide to Battle Revolution gave him wrong information about how to actually keep this costume, due to a translation error that said the player must have already obtained the regular color Groudon costume. Yet in the English guide, it says the complete opposite. And after Falco's battle was over, the costume was gone. But with every journey of discovery comes another journey of preservation. The hunt was still on, and the torch was ready to be passed. Three years later, a shiny hunter and friend of mine would unearth the second shiny Groudon costume in internet history, and this time with the triumphant information that allowed him to keep this costume for good. Oh my god! 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 The hunt took him over 8,000 encounters, and due to how slow each encounter is, having to beat every single trainer beforehand, this hunt ended up taking him three years. And after talking to him on Discord about it, he told me about how the video that Hunter Falco posted confirming its legitimacy motivated him to begin the hunt himself. And it wasn't until about two months ago when it finally paid off. Since then, one other shiny hunter has claimed the shiny Pachirisu costume, but the other four are still completely uncharted Pokemon territory. To me, these unfound shiny Pokemon represent the pure essence of Pokemon in itself. Mechanics and truth buried in subtle words and lightly hinted secrets. Every once in a while, a secret will spread and cause a worldwide hunt to uncover the truth. But sometimes a secret will fall into the depths of obscurity and remain tucked away in its own pocket of completely uncharted waters. But this is why I love this community, because we care about mechanics that have been thrown away and forgotten. It allows us to open the dialogue and truly unearth mysteries and begin the never-ending quest to uncover every lost piece of Pokemon history. No matter how small, or forgotten. So with that said, thank you genuinely for watching this and allowing obscure knowledge about the things we love to have a place to live and be remembered.